Hello everybody, I'm back and hopefully I have sound this time. Um, I am doing a sound check. One, two, three, four. Do we have sound? Laura Beck. Anyways, I'm hoping that we do have sound. Let me just double check. I'm not sure. You're good. Okay, so we have sound. We're back, everybody. It is Thursday, and welcome to House Calls with Tom Felicia. Uh, it is a little chilly up here in Skinny Atlas. We are pretty close to Canada. Uh, it's windy. Um, it's a little overcast, so it's not as beautiful as it was yesterday. Um, but with this overcast conditions, I have to tell you, I am super excited because today we have Jeffrey Bill Huber, um, an amazing, iconic designer, American designer. And um, I used to work for Jeffrey for about four years. Um, and so I can't wait to uh, see where he is and if he's ready to go. Um, and hopefully you guys are ready to go as well. And hopefully you're all staying home, sheltering in place, um, and, um, and, uh, and, and not going too crazy. So let's have some fun. Let's see where Jeffrey is. Okay, let me get, do, do, do. there we go. There we are, an ad. Waiting for Jeffrey Bill Huber, very excited. Let's see, oh my God. I feel like I'm going to work because I worked for him for four years. Jeffrey. Hey, hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I have to I... say something so funny. So today when I was getting dressed, I literally was putting on a t-shirt. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you just fine. Okay. I was putting on a t-shirt and a sweater and I was like, you know what? I'm going to put on a collared shirt because I felt like I was going, I mean, I, I you know. Then you're going to the office. I'm going to the office. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, um, I was just the first collared shirt, I think, maybe the second, but I mean, the first time was by accident. Um, right. How are you? I am, you know, I'm in great shape. I am in Locust Valley, yep. uh, you know, and uh, <clears throat> sheltering in this big kick-ass old house. Yeah, uh, I love your house, by the way. Thank you. you know, we've been here, uh, I think, about 14 years now. Yep. Um, and this house has stood for 350 years. It was built in 1668. So we're just a small part of a very big history. Got it. That's great. Well, that's very cool. I love that. Now, when you say we, you're talking about Christoph. I'm talking about Christoph, uh, yeah. my son, who will be 13 yeah. uh, this this summer, July 26th. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Uh, and, uh, so, you know, the teenage years are here. Yeah. Uh, I, okay, when I bought this house, it was really because I needed a place to go that was closer to the city. As you yeah. know, uh, um, my little cottage in Nantucket uh, yeah. was... Was it uh, too difficult to get back and forth? Well, it, yeah. I ended up, you know, first of all, I ended up uh, you know, just running to uh, LaGuardia to try and catch, like, Colgan Airline. When you used yeah. to, like, run down, you know, run down, it's like, Little I have a board of pass. Yeah, I have a board of pass. Hey! You have to and they, eat out like the Flintstones. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then that uh, became even more complicated. <clears throat> uh, and so then you, you kind of figured out that they, like, you could hitch a ride yeah. at like Teterboro. You just go there and like sit around and eat popcorn waiting for some like, <laughs> yoo-hoo, like, hey, where's your plane well, going? But, Lo but Locust Valley is, I mean, I, it's a beautiful, that's a beautiful little enclave. It's amazing. And, um, and it is very convenient to the city. So it's probably it, it, it's your whole dynamic. Exactly. No, it, it is. Uh, it's a village, you know, and uh, it's it's 40 minutes outside of the city. We yep. step on the gas like we did you know, two and a half weeks ago. We were just like, okay, you have five minutes to get out of the city. Uh, look, Christo, Christo, you know, get your socks, get your candy yeah. bars. We're out of here. Well, I have, um, I have a question. Speaking of that, is Chris, how, what's Christoph's, um, you know, sort of, you know, he's a teenager, right? So he's he and his friends are all talking about what's going on. What's their perception of? Of the situation. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, kids are really level headed. You know, they, they roll with things probably better than we do. I think yeah. that we over, I think we over process. Yeah, over um, uh, and, um, they're not part of the, the uh, ongoing news cycles um, yeah. at all. You know, all, yeah. all Christoph wants is access to his Xbox and his yeah. cell phone. That's it. So, and you and I are like, you know, planted with our, our feet taped to the floor in yeah. front of the television set. In front of CNN. And like, yeah, exactly. Like bug eye with a bottle of whiskey. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, ah. which I, have a, I did a red wine goblet of white wine today because I was like, Oh, you, you are. 
It was so you good. are so smart, and um, yeah, I, I'm just hydrating so I can dehydrate tonight. Later. Yes. Oh my God, that's one of your. Oh my God, do you know I still use that? That is Sorry. one of the funniest things. Oh my God, that is so funny. I remember the first time that I heard that that you said that, and I was like, Oh my God, that's so hilarious. Uh, right. <laughs> right. And, and that was, you know, that was my, really one of my first clients, and, you know, Judy Cranick, who um, you oh, remember that, you know, yeah. that, that incredible house that, that uh, out in Pennsylvania, that was my first project. Yeah. Uh, it was a oh, seminal I project. I realized that was your first project. That was the first client and the first project. Well, you, well, you got well, to know them because it, yeah. you, know, uh, you know, I decorated you know, that house uh, you, ongoing. You, were, you, you designed their house and like helped them with the bones of it. Um, prior to my arrival, but you have all, it was almost like an ongoing, they were so house proud and they always loved to have little projects and redoing rooms and right. it was a constant. Well, uh, well you know, this, this, this represented the ideal client you know, to, to me, uh, the ones who, you know, who said that they wanted to make an investment in living. And yeah. living obviously is an ongoing you know, adventure. Yeah. So there was always an opportunity to do something else or do something yeah. more. The foundations are important. When, when yeah. we do, we have to lay the foundations out beautifully. And so getting the rooms right, getting the furniture plan right, getting the color plan right, those are the huge yeah. decisions which are front loaded. But then you can continue to evolve. Yeah. Well, I have to say, okay, so I, you know, I love the Cranix. Uh, they're no longer with us. Right. Um, I know that- They're with me. I know, yeah, they're always with you. But there, I know, and I know that you were very close with them and had a great yeah. relationship with them. And by the way, that house actually, when I look back on, so for everyone to understand, I worked with Jeffrey for four years, um, and I had it was one of my it was it was it it was one of the things in my career that by the time I realized what I wanted to do in design and what was exciting to me, I was like looking at all of the people that. I were around in New York City that I was excited about. And Jeffrey Bill Huber was that person as yeah. a designer that was really interesting to me. And I loved his work. So and you I, came, but you I came to me, it. well, you I, came to me with a storied history as well. Yeah. So, so, you know, you already came with an enormous sense of design. You came with great street credibility because of your, your uh, previous work experience. You also, we had established ours as, as a working viable yeah. office. And I yeah. think that you came in after Stephen Gambrell departed. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, Stephen was the one. So I, so I started interviewing with you. I, I, I want to use kind of the word stalking a little bit. But I would I would always call and I would, I interviewed with you about three times or four times and and they were always great and you said to me like if there's a position available you know like well you know definitely but it was just kind of keeping the dialogue going and then Stephen reached out to me and said hey you know I'm thinking of you know starting my own company and I just I wanted to see if you would still be interested in a position here because I would love to you know help you know you know what do that which by the way I thought was. Such a cool thing for him to do. Oh, so you, you were having sidebar conversations with Stephen Wynn because he wanted to take no, no, the yeah. exit and make sure yeah. that, that he yeah. uh, um, uh, Had, did so gracefully and right, graciously. Yeah. And, and by the way, I thought that was actually really cool. And then I think he spoke to you and then I, that's, how the, that's how it all happened. But, um, I, you know, I just feel like, uh, well, first of all, I want to let everyone know, please send in questions for Jeffrey and I. Um, if you um, if you if you can do that, that would be really great. Um, so yeah, I think I, okay, let's well, let's roll with some of those questions. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think we've got our lighting and our audio down. You're looking kind of yeah. fine. <laughs> am, I, uh, am I holding up? I'm trying to figure out. You, it, are, you, know, you look. I, I, oh, you know for, what I've got? I'm looking like this, like this. Here, no, no, this is. No, I've got something that which will is it a um, help? Yeah, you know, so we get a better understanding of what we've just gone to. And no, here no, we go. No. This I, is before <laughs> and after what do you think I, you look great i'm telling you hey you everybody great. like like let's get comments Wait. here yeah who wore it best yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's like you're wearing the same shirt we have, we have a question from a viewer they want to know what map is uh behind you jeffrey oh that is great you know i you know i always talk about our history i talk about you know um uh, i 
visually about what connects us yep. all. The map, which is behind me, uh, belonged to my grandfather's sister, uh, uh, her name, Aunt Gay or Gertrude. Uh, she was very important to me because she was the first person that I knew that actually went around uh, the country and collected antiques. Usually it was you know, pewter or American you know, Indian, like Native American um, objects. And then cool. she, she had a sideline business uh, uh, as a travel agent in New York on Park Avenue, which is called Vacation Advisor. Um, and then, so the reason that she could collect is that she actually went to different places that she would recommend her clients to go to. That back then in the 30s, I mean, you couldn't send somebody to no. Austin, Texas, unless you'd been. You couldn't right. send somebody to, to San Francisco unless you'd been. Right. Uh, so this is the map that, that hung over her desk uh, at her um, at her office, thing of called Vacation Advisors, Park Avenue and Fifty Third Street. That's very uh, cool. what and it's been, been yeah, it's how great. Did you, how did you end up with the map? How did that all? How did I had to kill my whole family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're still in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thankfully, yeah, this, because this house was a, uh, formerly a, a hotel and a restaurant, it has a big walk-in freezer. So yeah. mom, dad, and all the you know, brothers are all down there yeah. chilling. Well, that's hilarious. <laughs> chilling. There's like chilling. that little sort of uh, hatch in the floor. Um, so I have a qu Okay, so this is a real question. You just said the Cranix were your first clients. Um, I knew I, I knew that you had known them forever and were very close to them. I didn't realize they were your first clients. I also had the opportunity when um, I first started working with you. You and I went and spent um, a night with the Cranix. We had dinner with them, okay. and they made a beautiful dinner, and we were in the dining room. And uh, when I, it's probably the most beautiful dining room this country has I ever loved the witnessed. Dining room. The right. dining table was amazing. Right. Uh, and that was a piece that you guys found together. Um, that, the table, the, yeah, the table, remember, was, uh, uh, it came from Kaluna Farm, which yeah. was Babe Paley's house out, yeah. out here on yeah. Long Island, in the North yeah. Shore. So yeah. it had a storied history. Uh, and, and in fact, I remember when I called my client and said, you know, I found the perfect dining table, Judy. Uh, and she says, I don't want to go see it. I'm like, no, no, you have to come see it. She's just like, I don't want to see it. It's like, you have to. And I'm like, why don't you want to see this table? And she goes, because I know I'm going to love it. I'm like, I know, that's a complaint to me. And she's, but I have to pay the plumber. I'm like, well, the, the plumber can wait, which is going to be the title of my sixth book. I think the plumber can wait. Well, <laughs> that house, so the Cranick house, was one of the houses that um, was one of your projects that really excited me about your work and um, and what you did with their living room and the 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 the, uh, the, the, the sort of bark cloth on the wall that was right. you know there was something very cool to me at that time that I had seen in your office and um, and the, the way that you hung the art of the sort of the fish sort of the fly fish moment right. you know kind of right. Kind of, it was, a, it was, yeah, it was a, it was a toad right, that was right. jumping and right, it was right. all like stop action photography. Right, right, right. It was but so all of this was, it was considered enormously original, enormously yeah. um, uh, unique at the time. Um, right. It was oh. all called from sort of visual history that you and I are familiar with, like Jean-Michel Franck and right. rooms, great rooms, of European yeah. rooms of the, you know, of the 20s and yeah. the 30s. Yeah. I was just rethinking them. I was, yeah. you know, I, I yeah. was trying to make them uh, more American, cleaner. Yeah. Yeah, well, tighter, brighter. Well, it's interesting. You know, um, I feel like I, I love that you always talk about American design and that you bring it back to American design a lot. And it's something that I also um, am very, it's very, it's very much an influence for me as well. And I always talk about how. American well, your book, American Beauty. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, to me, American design, what so much, Americana, so much of it was a simplification of European influence. Right. And, um, and so the idea of simplification to me is sort of sort of a modern approach to something it's simp classic. A simplification and also a sampling. What, what we do as American designers, which you do very well, and what you know, the, the designers at this level do, is that we're permitted to sample different cultures, different periods, yeah. and different times. And, you know, and I've said it you know, many times, if you ask someone to think of a French room, they get a very, very specific you know, right. visual. Yeah. If you ask someone to think of a Russian room or an English room, they're very big pictures that they can get. Right. If you ask someone to define it, you know, to get a visual of an American room, it's a blur. Right. 
That's because, that's because we, as a culture, are allowed to sample all these all different these periods right. and make yeah. something original that wasn't there right. before. We're not going to create a French room or an English right. room. We right. can take the best of those, right. and we can take a 1930s cabinet and put it next to an 18th yeah. century you know, cabinet, a 21st century painting. Yeah. Well, so I, I have so many questions that I'm excited to ask you. First of all, um, I want to ask you, how did you get started? It's like creating for your first um clients right that's and right what was your how did you i mean look you're an iconic american legendary designer and you're incredibly talented you're also incredibly hilarious which is one of my favorite um <laughs> of, and and you and you take what you do seriously but you have fun with it and you don't take yourself so seriously well but, i think that's one of the reasons that we got along so well when yes, you I were agree. working with me is yeah, that we had we had a great dialogue yeah yeah i i remember going away like I remember thinking like you would say to me like hey this weekend can we go so to, to a place and I remember my friends would be like you're gonna go away on the weekend I'm like we have so much fun and I'm right. so interested in what we're doing that it's like it's like I'm going it's like a it's like a experience I'm like I want to go like I mean like right. we have fun together and it was really like interesting to me and I felt like it was just a really positive experience I, I loved it and and still and I and I talk about it, you know, when I lecture and I talk to young people going in design and tell them how important I think that is. So um, with with a couple of things, I want to ask you how you got started, but I also want to ask you because you're one of those people that is a really strong influence in my career and and also you know my work life and my career. But I also wonder who were the where did, how did you get started and who were the real influences for you. Uh, and I hope I hope Alexa Hampton is listening here because this this <laughs> this harks back to you, my dear friend Alexa. Uh, yeah. I, it, it, you probably know that I actually have a degree in hotel administration yes, from I Cornell. Cornell. When I when I graduated from Cornell, uh, I went to work at the Carlisle Hotel, uh, and I started as the cashier. Of course, I lost all the money like the first day. <laughs> I'm like, but, uh, and you're gonna hold me well. Yeah, they're like, okay, here's Mr. Bill Hilbert, it's time to cash out. Like, okay, here's your five dollars. And they're like, no, we gave you five hundred dollars. Where's the four hundred and ninety-five dollars? Like, what four hundred ninety-five dollars? They're like, they're like, like, wait a minute, we give you five hundred dollars. You have to give us back five hundred dollars. Like, I looked in my pockets. I looked in the change drawer. It's not there. Like, you have to understand. We're going to hold you responsible. We're going to hold you accountable. So, you know, actually, a lesson, a valuable lesson there is that I had to pay that missing four hundred ninety-five friggin' dollars back. You know, it took, and they charged me five dollars a week and kept me there for four friggin' years because it was very. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, there, so I, I, I made good, you know, on the financial side. Yeah. When I went through, when they finally figured out, like, he's a dumbass cashier. Let's get him up. They were, they were like, maybe in the housekeeping, like, maybe we'll make a better bed. So, um, so I ended up being the night housekeeper. The night housekeeper, um, uh, so I would go to work every day at, at two o'clock in the afternoon and come home at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. At night at that hotel, um, Mark Hampton would be there and he would be um, uh, renovating, he was in charge of renovating the rooms. He was hired by right. Peter Sharp, who owned the hotel. And you know, I mean, Mark Hampton, was was working on Peter Sharp's apartment and Peter Sharp gave him the job of redecorating the hotel. So I got to see a a, a highly right. intelligent, like, academic, creative person merge business and beauty. Because yeah. yeah. all of a sudden it wasn't just about a beautiful lampshade. It wasn't just about a you know a, a beautiful carpet or wall color. Yeah. What it was is a, is a linear sequence of how things are built, installed, delivered, yeah. and turned back yeah. to the owner. Yeah. So so I watched this for four years, and you know this was before anyone actually said you should be an interior designer. I knew that I had a visual, creative sensibility, but I never knew that it could merge with business. Art didn't merge with commerce. That's commerce, right? Yeah. Right, and we now know that art does have to merge yeah, with commerce in order to be successful. Yeah. Um, so after four years, I actually uh, couldn't go to work one day. I was like, I'm, you know, I'm not feeling so hot. It's like, I don't have a cough. Like, what's the next day, it's like, I still don't feel so hot. It's like, you don't have a cold? I was like, take my temperature like 500 times, like I did two weeks ago. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, but nothing was wrong. Then I realized, 
you know, what was actually wrong is I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be, I wasn't doing what I was supposed to, you know, uh, to, right. meant to do. And I went in, I sat down and I said, you know, I, I can't figure this out. I've never taken a day off in my life, um, but I just can't come to work. I can't, I, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. And they said, well, what is it you want to do? It's like, I want to be a decorator. <laughs> like, where the hell did that come from? Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, I, I, have to t I have to tell you something. So to interject for one second. I, one of the things that I, uh, that I always think about in all of the experiences that I had in the office, out of the office, during work hours when we would, you know, be traveling <laughs> after work hours and we're having a drink. You are such an amazing storyteller and you're so animated. And I think that, I think my mom was a really great storyteller and she would like, she was very animated. So I really respond to that and I love it. But I also think that you're an amazing storyteller in design. I think that your rooms and one of the things that really um, attracted me to your your work and I think what most a lot of people see in your work and when you look at your books um, all of your books tell a really amazing story there's a yeah there there's, is, a there's, there's a narrative there's a narrative everything uh, you do, which is and really I think cool. I think that that's what also um, uh, makes American decorators so you know, skilled at what they do is they they right. really they really do tell beautiful stories they really right. want you know, to expand on our own sense yeah. of history. You know, yeah. And if you remember, you know, Anna Wintour wrote the forward to yes. my first book. And yes. I think that we overlapped with Anna too when, when you were there, weren't you? We, yeah, no, no, uh, no, I, you don't understand. When, when, I, when I saw the movie, what was it? Um, uh, you the know, Devil Wears Prada. Devil Wears Prada. I mean, those two girls at the front desk, if you remember, right. I, Oh, they're like, I think once every four weeks or three weeks or five weeks, there was like a schedule and I would show up and there would be all that new stacked art and I'd have a hammer and like right. a bag of nails and I would have to like figure out what to get rid of. Right. At night. Over. Like I edit and like get yeah. the nails out and then like go, yeah. go, go, I let's go. tell you, there's not a day that goes by that I hang artwork that I don't think about one of the funniest stories in my entire career is when your client on Fisher's Island called and said they needed something delivered or installed or hung in the dining room. And it was it, whatever it was. And William Dampert and I had to get into like a rental car and drive right. a miles an hour through Connecticut. Yeah, it was like, it was like a Buick LeSabre or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. like a big old Buick. Yeah. We, had ah! ferry, we had to make the ferry. We got onto the ferry. And um, we got onto the right. Road. And you drive, you know, you drive, you drive like 150 miles yeah. an hour up 95 north. And this is when the gate is going down, but ding, 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 like meow, boom, and, and you're my, like, we're on the ferry. Story or whatever I was driving just like made it by the skin of the right. trunk. And then we're on the island. There's nothing open. We get there. We get to the house, and I'm and I'm hanging the artwork in the dining room. And William keeps saying to me. Do you think that's too low? Do you think? And I said, no, this is, uh, this is how this Jeffrey does this kind of almost like wall scape. Yeah, he hangs low. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. But no, I was like, there, you, you, you're, you're, the way that you hang art and the freedom that you have with hanging art um, is something that I really was, it was in a big impact on me when I right. first started working with you because, like, I have, like, just something as silly as that. That my my old dog Laga Apaco, right? Store. And that's a Jeffrey Bill Huber moment. Like that is something that when I do that, I think to myself, like you just you opened up the possibility of like we, good from a seat. Because it it was about personality. We wanted we yeah. wanted it wasn't art as trophies. It wasn't yeah. art you know as yeah. some sense yeah. of achievement or accomplishment. Yeah. What yep. we wanted to do was this was you know when, and with Anna with all yep. with, you know, with all of my clients it, it was just attractive sketches yep. drawings watercolors photographs so but we had to build a narrative and right. that's actually what you know and we had to build a story by the way we installed it because you didn't want to focus necessarily on the individual right. aspect it's this thing which I refer to as sort of decorator's math is like sort of one plus one equals three right. 
Like the objects when combined are better than when taken individually. Right. So when we had, when install, when you and I would install, you know, Fisher's Island or you know, Anna Winter's office, you yeah. know, or the Cranix house, you know, we right. wanted to walk into a room and see a big, beautiful room, not a great painting, right. and not right. a wonderful right. sofa, but a beautiful room. And you know, also, what Anna I did, remember what Anna did, which was so great. She, in her forward, she said, "Jeffrey's a sort of interior decorator who takes your own taste and makes it better." Yeah, that's think, what we do. By the way, you know what? I think that um, I agree with that one hundred percent. And I also think that it, you, you, when you, when you create that, that, um, that sort of flow of, and it's kind of this natural flow of the way that the space sort of wants to be seen and wants to feel. Um, I think that's when you create that narrative and it's yeah. really fun to be in the space because there's always something interesting to look at and you see it differently when you're seated. It's not, it's not by the book, you know, it feels, it feels like you're breaking the rules, but you're not breaking the rules. You're breaking the rules in a way where it, it's making it more interesting. Right. Making it actually almost more intuitive. I think it, it, you know, we, intuitive is a terrific word, but what, yeah. we're, what we're delivering are rooms that, that have personality, that have style, that have sort of an American chic. They're also timeless rooms, because when you think yeah. about the rooms that you first saw working with me, yeah. they hold up as beautifully today oh, they, be, as they did Gosh. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, if I was even, I, I think my business is about 30 years in, 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 in production here. Um, that's value engineering. That's, we want timeless, beautiful, classic American rooms that, uh, that you can value engineer. You know, that, you know, you, know you, have to, you have to set aside funds in order to get a great decorator and you have to allocate them. What you wanna know when you allocate these funds is that five years, 10 years, 15 years later, you will not have a regret. You can evolve, you can change, you can recolor palette, but the foundations of great design you know, are valued engineered to last a, lot, you know, a, a lifetime. Yeah, I agree. No, I think that's so true. Um, so you've done so many amazing, like you, you've done I, I, like just such an incredible uh, portfolio of work. And is there anything that- I'm glad you didn't say my body of work. You want to see yeah, my body of work? Hold on, hold on, wait. The portfolio. I mean, like, there, oh, there's my body of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my, my body of work isn't my best work, let me tell you. <laughs> um, so, but is there anything, is there a project that's most memorable to you and that is, um, you know, that, that, that you just feel like is, I know the Cranix House is one of those projects for you, but I'm sure there's, I'm sure there are others that-, that... It, 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 The answer to that is, is fairly straightforward, is that the project which is the most memorable for me is the, going to be the next project. You know, yeah. uh, my, you know what, what, I, what I'm proudest of is that we can continue to grow, that we can continue to evolve. Uh -huh. um, you know, I've, there, I've got a long storied history um, of working with you know, sort of high profile personalities in me. It was an amazing right. thing to work right. with David Bowie and Iman and you know, yeah. who both of whom became very good friends and I was in the wedding um, yeah. you know, in Italy. And um, it's been an incredible thing to work with Anna who, is, who wears yeah. her heart on her sleeve. As you know, you know contrary to pu the public perception, have you been wait, in the office? Wait, hold on. Let me tell you this story. I've never told you this story. Remember oh no. Before I wanted to tell you, there's a couple now, this one. I'm at the house in Bellport. And this is after they moved from Mastic. They moved to the big house in Bellport, right. right? And I was there because the curtains were being installed. So I was just there basically to oversee and make sure that they didn't do anything weird and to break right. it or whatever. Right. So I was there. I drove out by myself to just, you, you, you had designed the curtains and everything and they were going in and I was there to oversee the installation. So I was there and, um, and I'm just, you know, kind of sitting there watching the curtains go in and asking them questions and making sure that the poles were at the right height and all that. And so um, Anna, this is such an amazing story. She comes downstairs and she said, Clickety clack, clickety clack. You can hear like a little yeah. Manolo. <laughs> it's yeah, like, so down light, so light. Right. She said, Thomas, would you like something to eat? And I said, right. oh, oh, thank you. That'd be awesome. Because you know, I was there for, we, we had to wait for there. They were late. So I said, sure, that'd be great. So she goes to the kitchen, I go with her, I sit down and she opens the refrigerator and right. it is filled, like literally filled, like almost like it's a Saturday Night Live skit of Kentucky <laughs> Fried Chicken Boxes. <laughs> <laughs> it is just Kentucky Fried Chicken Boxes. And she, and she goes, 
We had a little party for B. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my god! I'm like that. I like, I, I knew that the fact that she knew that I was looking at it like there's right. not like wow, what's in there? And right. she goes, we had a little party for B, and right. then her daughter, and then um, and but, then. And but then, you see, that's the most important thing is that we have to understand. Go ahead. Made, she made me a ham sandwich. She took out bread, <laughs> made a ham sandwich. She said, "Would you like mayonnaise or mustard?" She did the whole thing. She put it on a plate. She cut it into four, you know, triangles. She put it down. And she said, um, there you go, she said, if you want anything else, help yourself. And she walks out. And I'm like, no one would ever think, A, that there was Kentucky Fried Chicken even on the premises. Right. Like, and then that she would make it. I mean, so I agree with you. I wanted to do it with Exactly. Her. And but, you know, again, this is, yeah. this is why she's editor-in-chief. This is why she's yeah. creative director of Condé Nast, yeah. is that yeah. she, she, is, she has a wonderful, big, generous, beating yeah. heart. She reads humanity. She reads people. She's empathetic. Yeah. She, you know, you know, she, yeah. you know, and, and, and um, she, she runs a wonderful business, but she also embraces creativity. She loves people who love what they do. You know, she, yeah. you know, and, and that's exactly what we want with all of our clients. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of clients. Even if they don't feed you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even when they don't feed you. At least, I'm like, I'm just hoping for a cocktail. Um, but let me just ask you, so, so talking about clients, what's your vision or what do you, how would you describe like the ideal client? Or well, the, the, you know, honestly, uh, the ideal client lets me do what I'm supposed to do. What, they, what we want is, with a client is for them to, to understand that, that we're here to edit the field, that what, you know, our job is to listen to them and interpret who they are, read a better read of who they are, then let us bring the options to them and know that uh, for right. every every three lamps we show or every three chairs we show you know we've edited out 500 which didn't fit the budget or didn't fit the program or didn't fit the power yeah. you know so the you know the, it, it, that's a client that is trusting you know yeah. a client that understands that the best yeah. relationship is a relationship based on trust right. that's the that's the ideal client yeah i agree with you i think trust and dialogue communication are so important and um it always amazes me when clients are like they don't want to, they're, they're afraid to give you a budget or some information because they think that they want, they're, they're kind of like, it's like this whole game. And I'm like, it's just so much more, we can do so much more for you when we know the parameters. That's right. It helps, and and I, we can help you go beyond it or even below it you know, and, and suggest things that, that, that would make sense either way. Right. And we have these conversations, you know, these are, these are initial conversations that I have with my clients, you know, in the first meeting. And it truly, the way that it, the way that it works best is you, you know, to ask the client for two things. One is sort of a, what are their visual goals? What is it that they they want to attain? Right. And right. two, what's their financial allocation? These are the, there's just two right. things. Right. Visual okay. goals and financial allocation. And then all you have to do is make sure that they align. And if they don't align, right. one of the two has to change. <laughs> Either you change your visual goals or you, or you, yeah. you know, modify your financial allocation. I, and then once they merge together, then you can yeah. move forward. Yep, I totally agree. Um, that's a great answer. I, I love that. Um, so interesting. You right now are working on a very cool, very amazing. I, I saw the video of what you're doing with your new uh, fabric collection with uh, Le, Le Gracio. And I wanted to ask you to talk to us about it and a little bit about that process because it's such an amazing company. Everything's hand screened. It's really yeah. It it it's a remarkable company. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, it's hand finished. It's hand uh, burnished. Um, it, it's, you know, we have been building out our our collaborations and our collections as more people want more of me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The same thing with you. I think it's very good. You know, it's yeah. Like if we, yeah, you, know, you, you, you yeah. get I get stopped well, all the time. You know, the, yeah. People say, well, if I can't get like all of you, like how do I get a part of you? Like what part do you want? Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> okay. This is, by the way, this is available. <laughs> right. This, this, is totally, this is totally available, by the way. Exactly. You can get all of me. Uh, all of me. I don't know how many chairs and sofas and, and uh, fabric I can get you, but, but that's great. No, but tell me, 
how, how, you know, about the process and, and, and how long have you been developing this? And, and, and tell me. Uh, I, you know, it, 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 they take about a year. Yeah. Uh, but what I wanted to do is invent a, you know, a, a, a individual unique palette. Right. to you know, recoloring when I did my collection right. with the lacquer company, I came yep. up with a completely new palette. And you know, honestly, it, it influenced the rest of my work and, you know, as I move forward. So it's not just about you know, designing beautiful objects or beautiful product. That influences what you're doing with your, with yeah. your clients too. You yeah. know, 10 years ago, you know, we always talk like, yeah, I want another Magnolia Green Library. It's like, I just died. And, you know, another Magnolia I Green Library. By the way, I loved your furniture collection. It was amazing, and and the, oh, it was and really, it was a really great. It's a great. It was, a, it was beautiful. Really was. Thanks. Thanks. So, so with like so, um, let me tell you again. You know, I um, with you know, some of the and I've got. I, I'll, oh, I'll yeah. scan them in a minute. Yep. Uh, I mean, they, I what what was the back? What was the body cloth on that? I'm that, sorry. What was the body cloth on that one? What was that? That fabric you just lifted up. Well, this one, you know, you, everything is on. Uh, this is you know the, the the pattern is called Bannett, uh, and all of the collection has has uh, wonderful poetic names and uh, right. for their design. I'm going to see if I can spin this around and let's see if we can. You yeah, know, you can tap if you tap it twice, it'll 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 go the other way. There you so go. Uh, hey, everybody, look where I am. <laughs> While amazing. I'm up here, um, so. So you know, here are some of the you know, collections um, and some of the patterns and the colors. You know, they're vibrant, they're colorful, they're, um, they're you know, you know, romantic, um, yeah. which is just, I, I think I'm so proud of this because what we need is, is more, um, we, sorry, what we need is, uh, is, more animation, more vibrancy, yeah. more, yeah. more more kind of personality. Well, I, love, I love that you're bringing sort of organics and graphic uh, graphics together, which is really cool, and sort of these sort of natural kind of like references that that are maybe not so literal and organic, and then and then the the graphic sort of pops that are bold. It's a really yeah. nice. It feels like what you were talking about earlier, where as American design, we can draw from so much because we have that freedom of, or it is this sort of melting pot of design in a certain way. Right, right. Yeah. And what I, I mean, where I started with this collection is I started to do a lot of research on, on Wiener Bergstadt, you know, which yeah. was immersive, you know, sort of uh, design-driven uh, yeah. uh, school. Where, yeah. And, yeah. and if you remember with, you know, with Wiener Bergstadt, you know, it was not just about fabric, it was about life. You know, it, it, was, it yeah. was carpet, Clothing, yeah. well, ha you know, handbags, you know, um, yeah. artwork, and so yeah. they, these well, were I fully it immersive. Very, it was very narrative driven. It was also a very narrative driven concept because you know rugs are always rugs generally tell a story. And, you know, right. artwork is always about there's an emotional storytelling that kind of usually is the the inspiration behind the the artwork. So I think that I think you're driven to that. I would you know I could see you as a really great like Billy Haynes, you know, like as like a as like a movie set designer, because I think um, I think I think um, I just feel like your um, your the narrative is so strong in your right. in your in your body of work in your in your. Uh -oh. Portfolio. Well, and I was asked recently about like you know because we, we've all been watching a lot of movies or we've all yeah, been watching yeah, a lot yeah. of television you know, about um, like favorite set design uh, and you know, and I think and that's a very very you know, um, uh, astonishing feel because what you're trying to deliver in set design is believability you know whether it is 2001 a space odyssey or boogie nights you know which is like suburban you know averageness you have to build a story you have to build yeah. a believable backdrop um i was thinking about you know this movie called a new leaf which my great friend you know, dd ryan did the sets and it you know it was a lot of it was filmed out on out here on the north shore you know colossal big georgian houses but the rooms yeah. were all painted white and there was a there was a you know, like a chinese chester doors and a morris lewis painting you know, and and like a Mies van der Rohe chair um, you know that's incredible I mean just when when you think about how set designs have to yeah. you know, you know, deliver yeah. messages or underlying yeah. themes well and also they they are totally underlying themes and they are there's a 
there is so much information um, that the director and the uh, the story is sort of there's so much information. Like very when you watch the movie for the first time, there's 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 you see it as sort of a backdrop, but then when you have the opportunity to know what's really happening and you can kind of focus on the details, you start to see how much um, how much detail goes into connecting the environment, right. the wardrobe, the environment, um, the weather, the every, you know, all of these details that start to really tell, sort of connect to that story, which I think is really cool. Yeah. That's really, so is there anything else that inspired you for the new collection other than, you know, sort of? Well, you know, again, uh, you know, my, my sense of color, the color you know, it, is, you know, how we reinvent our palette and we can identify color from periods yeah. of time. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, you know, and color for me uh, represents confidence. Um, yeah. you know, and so I use, I use color um, to, to address very specific issues about how we communicate, the confidence with which we communicate. Right. So this is a whole new color palette. Yeah, and right. I think that it's a color palette that what I'm trying to do is not repeat myself. I think that it's really important. If you look at my work, if I look at yours, if we look at yeah. uh, other great designers, we, we should see that, that they have constantly, continually evolved and they've embraced you know, sort of modern society. And we are, yeah. we're barometers yeah. of change. That's what yeah. decorators yeah. do. We're barometers yeah. of change. Yes, exactly. I totally agree with that. And it's actually, you know, a lot of it is because we're so interested in what we're doing, like so many other people that love what they do, that you're kind of, it's sort of, um, it sort of organically happens that you're sort of looking to what's next and you don't even realize that you're doing it. It just kind of happens because you're, you're, you're kind of really saturated in what's happening right now. So you're That's right. sort of organically kind of moving forward. Um, how do you see the relationship between, um, you sort of, in, you know, sort of, traditional brick and mortar interior design and product. Do you like that? that well, it, it became apparent to me that, that, that design is, is a whole needed to be accessible. Uh, um, yeah. if, we, if we can, and I don't think that the products were in the, in the business of delivering products with our collaboration because we're, we're looking forward to the millions and millions of dollars we're gonna make on this set. <laughs> We do it because people are asking us for, for these products. They're asking us yeah, for, yeah. for some way that they can take initial steps into good design. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. through product development right. that you can do it. Yeah, I call it a gateway drug. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so Jeffrey, question from a viewer. Is Jeffrey's home named after a revolutionary war general? Can you tell us more about that? Uh, it's actually not. Well, that, you know, the name of the house uh, is, is Hay Fever. Um, two words, H-A-Y-F-E-V-E-R. And that, uh, a lot of people think that it's part of a Noel Coward uh, uh, play, but it's not. It was because the house was owned by the Hay family um, for, th uh, for two generations uh, that it, it took on the name Hay Fever. And when I was looking at this house, which was a well, what mess. Year, what year it, it was built in 1668. 1668, wow. Right. wow. So, um, so uh, you know, 350 years old. Um, uh, when I bought it 15 years ago, it was basically uninhabitable. Um, and it, it was like one little drippy faucet and like a little flicker right. and <laughs> a little light bulb. Um, and, and I'm like, this is like crazy. Like you are so not going to be, you know, buy this. I was like, yeah, um, and, and I'm thinking like, get out of here while you still can. Like, just yeah. like, like hey, you know. I have to tell you something. My house was built in 1917, but um, it's the name of the house is Evening Wood because I have the evening. Uh, I can see the sunset from from my from where my house is. My <laughs> guest house is called Morning Wood. And um, that's because it gets the morning sun. Uh -huh. It's the sun coming from the, from the east. And then the, get, the, the, the dock house is afternoon delight. Is what? Afternoon delight. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm so glad you don't have any more houses on that property because you, I, don't want to, I don't want to push your luck. My Christmas card just says, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that, that's, that's funny. Anyway, when I was you know, trying to you know, I, 
can you know, talk myself out of buying this house and I was getting ready to just push the real estate agent you know, out of the way and get in the car and speed down the driveway. <laughs> they're, they're like running after me. It's like, oh, wait a minute, wait. Did I tell you the name of the house? It's called Hay Fever. I'm like, <laughs> And I backed the car up. What do you say? They're like, the house is called Hay Fever. That I'll take it. Oh, <laughs> well, how do you say no to a house named Hay Fever? You can't. Oh, good. It's so funny. That is really a great name. Oh my God. I wonder if the walls were originally insulated with hay. If they, I'm sorry, if they were what? Originally insulated with hay. Uh, we took them all apart. I didn't find any hay. I found lots of other things like I found, you know, I guns found, and panties. And... Found, <laughs> nuts. There were nuts everywhere. Apparently, there was a family of squirrels that was living in here who had to relocate and were very upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> or they would look at me in the driveway when I would pull in like, there he is. Yeah, there he is. The two-time ambassador. He like, kicked us out. We're homeless squirrels. They're like, that's the big guy that ruins everything. Oh, my God. Listen, there have been a couple of times the past few weeks where I've looked out the bedroom window you know, with my little squeegee, like, eh, 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 as I look, you know, out there, my, my little, you know, homestead. And look at those squirrels, like, in there, like, like eating a little nut. It's like, God damn it, in my next life, I'm coming back, that mother friggin' squirrel. Look, not a care in the world. So you, so you, buy, so you have this amazing house. It's um, 350 years old. What is your, um, what is step number one when you start a new project? How do you approach it? Like, uh, yeah, uh, you, you mentioned intuitive before. Um, you know, I always start with with sketches. I um, with a with a client or uh, you know on my own. Um, and I'm, I, I, I draw to scale. I sketch to scale. So I, if, I, yeah, if I have a, and I'm sure you saw me many, many Yeah, no, no. Oh my God. I will never forget you and I during a snowstorm, we were working on a project that was for like a single guy that had an apartment on the Upper West Side in a sort of in a new, and it was a newer building at the time, which was kind of like very chic and like, you know, it was very, it was like a cool thing. And you and I went in to do drawings for a presentation right. and I was really taken aback by what an amazing art, like not just a, I mean, sketching and drawing and drawing to scale, you know, that doesn't always surprise me that someone is talented, you know, that's talented can, can, can do because they see that way. I mean, I sketch in, in, in scale almost just normally, but right. I, when your your actual drawing skills and the way that you illustrate is really cool. Right. Like the but way you did candle, the way you did candles was even like amazing. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was really, they were always like this one. It was like, exactly. It's like, what's that? It's like, oh, that's a candle. It's like, that's five feet tall. It's like, yep, that's right. Yep. Well, that, that actually, I think, was that, that was sort of you know, because of my um, working with Elsa Peretti. And I don't know if you yeah. remember with Elsa yeah. Peretti and all those beautiful silver objects. And she had yeah. candles. They were like mile high candles. Yeah. But you had to get a so step chic. ladder, light them. So chic. That's so cool. So um, how do you see, how have you seen the industry evolve, you know, in, in um, and, and now how do you think it's going to, like, based on what we're going through now and, and knowing sort of how the industry has, I mean, I know I've seen it evolve from something that was very sort of in the know to now something that is people really like we've kind of cracked open the secrets of interior design. And I right. think people are really excited. <clears throat> but also now sort of thinking like, how do we see this moving forward with I, 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 <clears throat> I, I'm pretty sure and pretty confident that what's going to happen here is <clears throat> um, people are really going to fully understand how powerful home is. <clears throat> we've all been locked in it for the last couple of weeks, if not more. We've all yeah. had a chance to sort of surround ourselves with, with things which are beautiful as well as things which are just plain irritating. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and, you know, and we, and we want to get busy and get, and get back to it because yeah. what, what has become true to me in the last four weeks is how powerfully important home is. Here is where we retreat to find comfort. Here is where we retreat to find confidence. Here yeah. is where when in any difficult time we find comfort. Yep. Uh, and we and we build our voice. That didn't that doesn't happen 
when you charter a plane and go on some destination or you, you no. have a little no. island that you fly up to for right. two weeks out of the year. Those right. are what we used to call elevated experiences. Remember that five years yeah. ago? It's like, yeah. well, I don't want to get, I don't want to do my living room. I want an elevated experience. Like, where's that? It's like, where's that? Like, I like the elevated fit right here. Elevated ever, experience to my house means we're going to go on the roof and have a drink. Right, exactly. My elevated experience is like got a corkscrew attached to it. Like, uh, but stay home. It, you know, there's a reason we're being, you know, there's a more than a couple of reasons well, to stay but, home. I, I agree with all of that. Let me ask you, what does Jeffrey Billy Huber do in his free time at home? Like, what's your, how do you, like, what is your... Uh, Would anyone like to know what I did last week in my yeah, free time? Yeah, bring us up to speed. We want to know. Very fine <laughs> time. Um, I, I had the, the, the contractor <clears throat> deliver two gallons of Benjamin Moore paint and leave it outside the door. Like, like <clears throat> Benjamin Moore Prime. The yeah. yeah. Like, is there anything you need? It's like, yeah, I need a ham and cheese sandwich, <laughs> the broccoli, and a gallon of Benjamin Moore White Dove paint. <laughs> and I, I, and I, you know, I started to set little chores for, for me, and I painted. I painted the floors. I painted two bathroom floors. You paint, didn't you paint Christoph's bathroom floor? I painted Christoph's yeah. bathroom floor, um, which was skanky. That was so nasty. I mean, we're talking about a teenage boy. So it's a miracle to pick the seat up at all, let alone hit the toilet. That's hilarious. So I, mean, we, I painted his floor. I painted the third floor bathroom floor. Um, I cleaned out the cellar uh, because I, you know, I wanted to make point. order of chaos. That project, by the way, I have literally done everything on the first floor, everything on the second floor. I did the guest house. Now I have to do the basement and then the garage. And I'm, I'm really dreading the basement. Yeah, well, I'm ahead of you. My garage is clean as a whistle. We're having a, when this is over, we're going to have a dance in the garage, I can tell well, you. So spotless. I know, trust me, that's what I have to do. And I'm very nervous. Did you it. empty the medicine cabinets yet? I, I did. And I, I did all that. And I did. I have an old classic convertible that used to leak oil. And so the garage, I, the first thing I had to do is I had to like, Degrease the entire floor, which was not fun. <laughs> the power sprayer and everything. I mean, I can't believe I was doing it. But, anyways, I remember a funny story. You and I were traveling. I don't remember where we were going. And we were traveling. It was like we were getting on a flight. I think we were actually going to DC to do Bob Pittman's and uh, uh, and what's his wife's name? Anyways, we were going to their house. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were going to their house. And you were, we were at the airport. Now, we would never be able to do this ever again. But you, had, you were in a bag and you pulled it and you, and you had knives with you. We were, you cooked that night. Oh my God. You that's... told me, you were like, I always travel with knives. <laughs> I, like, I travel, like, I had kitchen knives. I rolled oh, up in aluminum foil. No, you did. And you had them like all neatly fit in this thing. And you, and by the way, in those days, they didn't even really, it wasn't even like a big thing. But, um, but it was funny. We went there and you made an amazing dinner. And it was you, me, and there was uh, there was a contractor. I can't think of his name. He was a young guy. He was Latin, and he had like he was really handsome. Remember, you, he flew with us. Oh God! He did, um, he did a lot of projects with us. He was amazing. No, I, I won't remember the name, but yeah, it's the one that we would basically All travel these, with. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, like yeah. get the cute, right. get the cute contractor, you know, yeah. <laughs> and the it knives. Was, We're on our way. It was the three of us. Three right. of us. What were some of the other projects that you worked on together? I can't remember. You, you, remind me some of the other projects that we did together. that was hilarious and fun. Oh my God, we did. Um, gosh, there were so many. I mean, oh, uh, I. Let me think. Um, there was a, fam the, a family that owned Fiji Water. Oh, that that's right. That's fun. right. Um, that was a really fun project in that building where the windows used to pop out. That they, <laughs> they would fly out. By the way, my grandfather lived in the building right next door to it that was the Mayflower. That's where my mother's father and uh, lived. Um, right. And so that was such a weird building for me when I was like, we would go there. But that was a really cool project. And they were that was a, interesting people, the Fiji water people. That's right. And the you know, Gilmore's. The Gilmore's. Yeah, the and Gilmore's. Were, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, and then that actually remember we we did a sort of like Asian vibe thing in there yeah, because we had to play cool. to the you know, to the you, I, know. you did you also did a really great sort of plinth like a tapered plinth at the end of their dining table with a really beautiful ceramic um sort of vessel right, right. And, exactly and it was it was very like um you know because it was like a second or third home or fourth home for them and they weren't in New York so much 
it was able to be very kind of like it was it was very style, you know, stylized. Right. If, it's, if it's a full movie, like a movie set, beautiful, a like movie set, and very theatrical. The ceilings were very high. What? Right. Ceilings were really high, and then we did them all in like gloss paint. Yeah. We did sort of yeah. classical referencing. Yes. And yeah. that was, and that's a really interesting thing, because the, that was a project that I was so proud of, because it was big. It was like 5,000 square foot apartment, which ended up, remember, we yeah. made it a one bedroom apartment. It was a four bedroom apartment. Yeah. We converted, yeah. you and I converted it to a yeah. one bedroom well, apartment. Well, but Jeffrey, you know, one of the things, if you remember, that was when I first learned about sheer walls, because there was supposed to be a wall that they were in the plan when we got the apartment, there was no wall. And then, um, and then all of a sudden they said to us, they couldn't take the wall out because the sheer wall was to keep the building from- To swing. keep the rest of the building up. Yeah. yeah, so that was- It's I like, take that this that wall was, down. Uh, know, babe, like, babe, and, take this and, wall down and put a door where a door ought to be. Get rid of it. Uh, but okay, what happened, which is really great, is I was so proud of that project. It was a seminal project, it was a big deal. Uh, and I sent some scout shots to Paige Rent at Architectural Digest and, and, and Paige Rent said no. She you know, declined the project. And I had dinner with Mario Buada, who was a big champion of my early yeah. work. I had dinner with him and I said, I can't believe this project, you know, 5,000 square foot, one bedroom, kick-ass apartment, you know, you know, views for miles and the, you know, it's already on the, the cusp of sort of Asian influence design. You know, he sent a page and, and you know, she said, no, he said, take me to the apartment. You know, take me to the apartment. This is how our industry works as a camaraderie. And yeah. I took Mario over to the you know, apartment. Right. And he was, he, and he, yeah. And, and he got on the phone the next day and said, Paige, you are a fool. You're a dumbass fool. Like, you know, this is one of the greatest apartments ever seen. One of, the most, you know, one of America's greatest designers. You know, at, the, at the zenith of his power, you're going to publish this project. Um, and she reconsidered. I remember when it was published. I remember when it was published. And, it was and, then, and it became, the, it was the cover of Architectural Digest. So not only did, it, you know, did she reject and then reconsider, but yeah. then it, it, it gave 16 pages or something, or 12, yeah. you know, 14 pages in the middle, in the well of the book, and on the cover. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that just means Jeffrey. perseverance. I have to cut you, I hate to cut you off because I'm having so much fun. And I, by the way, I have so much more to ask you. So we have to do this again. But I want to thank you for, um, for, Ant for being a part of House Calls. It is always amazing. And uh, I love seeing you and talking to you and reminiscing with you and talking to you about design because you are such a, you're, you have such an intellect and such an, an interesting um, and unique and fresh take on design. And I love it. So thank you so much for, 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 for being a part of this. I also want to thank everybody else for being a part of House Calls. Like, we're going to get cut off in one minute. Um, thanks for answering our house call, inviting both Jeffrey and I into your home, your workplace, or wherever you're staying in shelter. Um, thank you again. I hope to see you guys tomorrow at 1230 to 130. I'm with Carson Cressley. Um, it's Good Friday tomorrow. Remember that. So fish is on the menu. They just got better. 130 to 2. Um, I'm going to be taking viewer questions at media. And you can send your questions to media at TomFelicia.com. Jeffrey, I love you. I love you, too. By the way, Christoph is going to be a supermodel, by the way. Oh, God help us all. At least we got the connections in the industry. He's the cutest ever. Thank you. Love you. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Have a great day. Love you, Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. I had the best time. Thank love you. you. Bye.